After applying 2D finish operations, I'm ready to dive into finishing the saw body. Starting from the top, Parallel draws lines with a constant step over along a specified direction and projects them onto the surface, making it especially well suited for surfaces that have most Z height changes along a single axis. Contour is a waterline toolpath, meaning it is made up of distinct Z heights with a constant step down and is most well suited for steep walls. Ramp is similar to contour in that it's best for steep walls and uses a constant step down value. However, Ramp completes the operation in a single smooth pass that remains engaged with the material, making it superior in brittle or hard materials. Horizontal automatically detects and applies toolpath to flat areas on the model. Pencil automatically detects internal fillets and corners and runs the end mill along those internal areas, making it great for cleaning up at the end. Scallop is a versatile strategy that leaves a constant scallop height behind leaving a consistent surface finish on most geometry. Spiral projects a spiral with a constant step over onto the surface and is well suited for shallow, circular geometry. Radial is also well suited for shallow, round geometry, but radiates from a center point, taking constant degree step overs. Morphed spiral is similar to spiral in that it spirals outward from a center point, but it also morphs to match the shape of the machining boundary. Finally, Project takes selected sketch geometry and projects it onto the surface of the model. It's helpful to refer to the tooltips if I need a little more information about a particular toolpath and to see an example of that toolpath applied to sample geometry. I'll start out finishing the saw body with a parallel and go through the tabs just like in the 2D finishing operations. First, I'll need to pick a ball end mill. And this is a good time to remember that the tool library may be filtering out tools I expect to see, and I can adjust it by clicking on the tools being shown and adding or removing tool types. At the bottom, I can enable shaft and holder to allow Fusion to detect potential collisions with the shaft, holder, or both within specified clearances. I can choose how Fusion responds to detected collisions from four methods. Pull away will move away from the part and then re-engage when it's safe to continue. Trimmed will cut out the problematic parts of the toolpath. Detect tool length will automatically update the current tool to the required length to complete the operation and alert me in a message with the updated length. And fail on collision will simply fail the entire operation if a collision is found. In the geometry tab, I don't need to select specific geometry but I will apply a machining boundary to keep the toolpath contained to the 3D surfaces on the saw body. I'll also change the containment type to allow the tool to go outside the boundary so it can reach the sides. I'll enable avoid touch surfaces to keep the toolpath off selected vertical and horizontal surfaces. Note that I can check the touch button to have the toolpath touch only the selected surfaces. In passes, I'll first set my step over to something reasonable, like 50 thousandths. Then I can adjust the pass direction of the parallel passes. Zero degrees is the default, and points along the x-axis of my setup. Most of the features on the saw body vary along the y-axis, so I'll change this to 90 degrees. There are still some areas that parallel might not handle well, so I can enable machine steep areas to add passes on those steeper portions. Lastly, in the linking tab, I'll change the retraction policy to minimum retraction to decrease the length of retract moves. I'll hit OK and see what this parallel looks like. I can clearly see the areas where additional passes were added, and it looks like this parallel would do a reasonable job of finishing the saw. If I want to quickly iterate on this parallel and be able to compare the tool pass visually, I can duplicate the first parallel by right-clicking on the operation and selecting Duplicate. This transfers all of the parameters into a new parallel operation, and I can make small changes to see the effect without losing the original. This time, I'll disable machine steep areas and try a 45 degree pass angle to bisect those steep areas without any additional passes. Then I can rename the operation so I know what I've changed and can compare the results in a stock simulation later. I can also create a completely different kind of 3D operation based off of the first parallel using derived operations, also found in the right-click menu. 
creating a derived operation ports over as many parameters as possible from the existing operation into whatever new operation I select. The only limitation is that I can only create 2D from 2D and 3D from 3D. I'll apply this now to create a different type of toolpath, scallop, from the second parallel operation. I can see in the tool tab and geometry tab that the tool, shaft and holder settings, machining boundary, and even avoid surfaces were all preserved. The passes tab looks fairly different in scallop than it did in parallel, so the only parameter that carried over was the step over size. I'm okay with all the defaults for the remaining parameters, so I'll hit OK to generate the scallop. It looks good at a first glance, and now I have a third finish option generated quickly without duplicating effort. I can compare these finish passes using stock simulations, covered in the in-depth stock simulation video, and edit the existing operations or create new ones by following the same process of applying the tab principles and using derived operations.